What's up everybody? It's the first snowy day here in Chicago, so naturally we're in the garage working on the car. Uh, I'm going to make a quick video today to go over something that a few of my friends have asked help with that I feel like others may want to know. If you have a fuel cell that's got a fuel level sensor built into it or any other fuel tank that's got a fuel level and a Holly uh, digital dash, there's a little bit of wiring and some programming that needs to be done in order to get it to work correctly. So first I'm going to explain uh, different methods of how to figure out what your uh, resistance value for your fuel cell is going to be and uh, kind of demonstrate how the sender works and then we'll go into how to program it on the dash and then ultimately make sure that it works and it's reading correctly. So a little background on my car, I got a 15 gallon fuel cell. I street drive it on E85 so it goes through quite a bit of fuel. I'll put a link in the description for my particular cell in case anybody's wondering. All right, so the first thing you're going to need to understand is what the resistance value of your sending unit is. So it's typically measured in ohms. In my particular fuel cell on the data sheet when I bought it, it said it should be 0 to 100 ohms uh, from low fuel all the way up to full. Uh, one way you can check it if you don't have a data sheet is what I'm demonstrating here. Take a multimeter on the two leads of the fuel cell and uh, you'll set your multimeter to resistance and then you'll measure the travel of the fuel level sender from low to high. So for my particular cell right now there's still some fuel in it so it's reading about 9 ohms. If you could fit your hand in the cell you could manually move your level sender by hand. For my particular cell I use some mechanic wire to hook onto this sender. So here you'll see me simulating filling the cell with fuel Basically, the level sender will float to the top and your resistance changes. This is what we're going to need to program into the dash in order for it to read correctly. If you don't already have one, you're going to need an expansion harness in order to connect to the dashboard. The one I'm using is made by Jeffrey Mink and allows 10 additional IOs through the Holly dash. However you decide to wire it in, that's completely up to you, so I'm going to do a very basic sketch here. So on the left is going to be our fuel cell, which obviously we've already gone over in the back. On the right, you're going to have your Holly dash, which obviously is going to have your harness coming out of it for your 10 additional I.O. channels. So for my particular setup, I'm actually going to be using the I.O. channel 10, uh, which I will show you when I go to the actual dashboard. Um, you have two wires from your fuel cell for your resistance. Obviously, you're going to hook one up to your input channel, so for mine in particular is channel 10, and then the other wire is going to go to the ground wire that's also on the dash harness. This ground wire is shared between all your other sensor grounds. You can also use different I.O. channels, just make sure before you do it that it can read resistance. Alright, now we're going to walk through how to set it up on the dash. First, when you select the dash, you're going to hit the menu button. After that, you're going to hit Configuration and then Dash Configuration. Here you're going to see your 10 different I.O. channels. As I mentioned before, I wanted to use channel 10, so that's where you're going to select the type. And for this, it's resistance, so you're going to select Ohms. Now you'll notice that there's a little gear icon that appears next to it. This is how you're going to configure your channel. Originally, you can see here that they have a value of 0 to 100, which actually is what we need for our fuel cell. If you look at the ohm value though, these do not line up. We needed 0 to 100 if you remember from our testing earlier. So here when you double click, it'll let you manually put in whatever values you need to into this table here. The ohms reading obviously needs to line up to whatever your sensor or in this case the fuel level sending unit uh, value was. And then obviously the value is going to be what your number on the dash is going to be. Once you're done, it's good practice to go back and make sure that your table's correct. Uh, after that, you're going to hit save, and then it'll go back to your main menu. Uh, hit OK, and then you're going to go to the Customize menu on your dash, click on the screen, then you're going to select Add Gauge, and this is where you're going to scroll, and you're going to look for your channel that you just programmed. Obviously, for me, this was just IO10, so you're going to click OK. I want a digital gauge. So I'm going to go back to Customize, and I'm going to change the label because I don't want it to say IO10. I'm going to put in here Fuel Level. You could put whatever you want in here. Um, you don't have to have any label at all, uh, but obviously use something that will identify what the channel is. 
Then you can scroll through the customized gauge settings, make sure that colors and transparency, everything's how you want it. And then once you're done, click the top right corner and hit save. And then you should be good to go. So now the last and final step that I always try to do is to make sure that things are working. So in this uh, video clip, I'm actually back by the gas tank once again with that mechanics wire, pulling it up to basically a full uh, fuel level, and then obviously lowering it back down to what would be where it's at right now. So obviously this is a quick check to verify that everything's working how it should, and in this case it is. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, make sure to ask in the uh, comments section. Uh, if you want to see more, obviously you can ask and I can try to make videos. Otherwise, uh, if you want to subscribe, hit that button. Thanks.